This video is about orthogonal projections. Orthogonal projections are the backbone of numerous advanced applications of linear algebra, so it is very important to understand them fully. The videos on orthogonality and orthogonal sets have provided a foundation for orthogonal projections. Let's now see what they are and how to use them. To start things off, let's look at how to project a vector onto a line. Suppose that we have a vector v1 and a vector y. We want to project the vector y onto the line spanned by the vector v1. So what this is going to look like is if we drop down a perpendicular line to v1 this part right here is the projection of y onto the line spanned by v1. So that will be the projection of y onto v1. And this is equal to the length of y times the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle in between the vector y and the vector v1. So what we just saw is that the projection of y onto v1 is equal to the length of y times the cosine of theta and this right here is a scalar. This is the length of this projection as we saw right here times a unit vector along v1 because we have to give it a direction so it's the length of the projection times a unit vector along v1 and this is equal to length of y times cosine of theta times v1 divided by the length of v1 since this is a unit vector along v1 which is divided by its length and made it into a unit vector well this is equal to just rewriting some things we're going to transfer this to the denominator over here and we're going to multiply the whole thing by 1 by v1 length of v1 over length of v1 and of course we still have the v1 vector on the outside here well if we group this slightly differently we'll get it into a form that we have seen before here we have the geometric definition of the inner product in the numerator and the dot product in the denominator so once again this is now equal to y dot v1 divided by v1 dot v1 and we still have this v1 vector on the outside because again this is just a scalar and this is an actual directional vector and this is equal to how we write here projection onto l1 of y where L1 is equal to the span of the vector V1, so the line that V1 spans. So we projected Y onto the subspace L1, which is the line spanned by V1. And this is what we get. Using this as a foundation, we can look at what happens when we project Y onto two vectors. So now suppose that we have vector v1, an orthogonal vector to it, v2, and our vector y. The projection of y onto v1 is given by this component over here. So this is projection onto L1 of Y where L1 is again the line spanned by V1 
then dropping it down onto v2 perpendicularly we have this here as the projection onto L2 of Y, where L2 is the line spanned by V2. And what we can see actually is that Y is going to be the summation of these two projections. So Y is equal to the projection onto L1 of Y plus the projection onto L2 of Y which is equal to, by using what we just saw before, this is equal to y dot v1 over v1 dot v1 times the vector v1 plus y dot v2 over v2 dot v2 times the vector v2. And this is just c1 v1 plus c2 v2 and comes out to exactly what we saw in the video on orthogonal sets and bases. These are exactly the ways that were associated with an orthogonal basis, where y is in the subspace that is spanned by the orthogonal basis v1 and v2. We can decompose it in this way, and that's exactly where these weights come from. They are the projections of y onto the basis vectors. This concept can further be generalized to the case when y is not in the subspace spanned by the basis vectors. So suppose we have an orthogonal basis made up of v1 through vp and this is a basis that spans a subspace W in Rn, we define y hat with a little hat on top of y as the projection of y onto the subspace W. So y itself does not have to be in W in order to get this. And this is equal to the projection of y onto L1 plus the projection of y onto L2 and so on for all of the projections up until Lp where once again as I've been defining it L1 is equal to the line spanned by V1 and L2 is equal to the span of V2, and so on. And then this is equal to, by looking at what we just saw before, this is equal to y dot V1 over V1 dot V1 times V1, because we have to give it a direction, plus y dot V2 over v2 dot v2 times the vector v2 and so on up until y dot vp over vp dot vp times vp. So this provides the full decomposition of the projection of y onto the subspace w where we project y onto each of the individual basis vectors in order to get this y hat. This can be visualized by looking at a picture like this. So let's say that we have a subspace w and we have some kind of a vector. We have a vector y that is not within the subspace. We want to find the orthogonal projection of y into the subspace, so that will be this perpendicular drop into the subspace, and therefore the vector y hat is going to be this. So this right here is y hat. 
And in order to find it, we're going to look at the decomposition of y hat onto the basis vectors for this subspace. So this is a two-dimensional subspace. It's going to have two basis vectors. And let's say that those are going to be like this. So this is going to be v1. And orthogonal to it, this is v2. Now we also have, of course, the lines that are spanned by this, which is what we'll be projecting onto. So this is L2. And for this one, we have this line going through it. And that is L1. So to decompose it, we're going to look at the projections onto each one of these basis vectors. And so the projection onto the basis vector v1 onto this line is going to be like this and so therefore this is going to be if we extend this further to here this entire line right here this vector is the projection onto L1 of y and we can do a similar thing here we can look at how this goes. Let's suppose it goes something like this. And so this whole line over here is going to be the projection onto L2 of Y. And so together, if you add them up, just like we had over here, we're going to get the vector Y hat. We can also look at the perpendicular component over here to d the subspace W which is defined as Z which is equal to Y minus Y hat. Y minus Y hat is this perpendicular vector over here and this leads us to also be able to find the distance between the vector y and the subspace w as this distance y minus y hat. So this kind of analysis then allows us to define another very important concept called the orthogonal decomposition theorem. The orthogonal decomposition theorem says that for w a subspace of Rn every y in Rn which is not necessarily in w can be written uniquely as y equals y hat plus z, where y hat, which is the projection of y onto w, is in w, and z, which is y minus y hat, is in w perp, the orthogonal complement to w. And that's exactly what we saw in this illustration here, that y hat has to be in w since it's made up of components of the basis vectors which define w. And z, which is again defined as y minus y hat, has to be orthogonal to w just by the construction. From this we can also write down two more observations. Specifically, that y hat is the best approximation to y by elements of w. That is, y hat is the closest that we can get to the actual vector y by staying in the subspace w. Another observation is that if y itself is in w, then y hat is equal to y. And this is what we saw in a previous video when y was in the subspace spanned by the basis vectors and therefore we can find it by projecting it onto the basis vectors and getting those weights. However, if y is not in the subspace, then we can only get close to y by using y hat. But if y is in the subspace w, then we can get to it exactly. Because y hat is made up of the components in w, and since y is in w, it is exactly equal to it. Overall, we have seen how to find an orthogonal projection onto any subspace and what the projection means. 
We have also seen how to find the distance between a vector and a subspace by looking at the difference of the vector and its projection onto the subspace. These concepts once again form the foundation for many advanced algorithms, one of which will be explored in a later video.